In this video, we'll introduce the basic concepts related to context-free grammars. A context-free grammar is essentially a set of writing rules where the left-hand side of every rule has length 1. In this context, rules are also called productions. Every symbol in the right-hand side of a rule is called variable or non-terminal of the grammar. Generally, we'll denote non-terminals by uppercase letters. The rest of the symbols are called terminals, and will be generally denoted by lowercase letters. In this case, S and X are variables, while A and B are terminals. Usually, the list of rules is represented in a succinct manner, by grouping right-hand sides for each variable. For example, the two right-hand sides of S are grouped in this way. In a grammar, a special symbol called initial symbol is always distinguished. It is usually written in the first position. In this case, S is the initial symbol. The words generated by the grammar are the ones reachable from the initial symbol that are built only of terminal symbols. Let's see an example of derivation with G. We start from S. In a first step, we start with the first rule and generate this intermediate word. Now, on this S, we apply the second rule, replacing it by X. At this moment, we apply the third rule and replace X by AXB. Finally, fourth rule allows us to replace X by the empty word. This word is already built of terminals. Hence, AAB is a word generated by the context free grammar G. A derivation can be also represented as a tree. At the root position, we place the initial symbol. As S was replaced by AS, we draw two children. One of them labeled with an A and the other labeled with an A. S. As this S was replaced by X, we have a child labeled with X, and so on. Thus, we obtain a derivation drift of our grammar. The generated word corresponds to the concatenation of all the leaves. In this case, we obtained the derivation tree for the word AAB, also called syntactic tree. Sometimes, context-free grammars are present in a more formal way, using a tuple containing the alphabet of variables or non-terminal, the alphabet of terminal symbols, the set of rules, and the initial symbol. In our case, this is the set of variables, this is the set of terminals, this is the set of rules, and this one is the initial symbol. The language generated by a grammar is defined as the set of words built of terminal symbols and reachable from the initial symbol. The language generated by a concrete variable of the grammar is the set of terminal words generated from that variable. In our example, it is not difficult to get convinced that the generated language is the set of words with a few A's followed by B's, where the number of A's is greater or equal than the number of B's. Note that from S we can generate as many A's as we want. At some point we may jump to X and from then on we can add as many pairs AB as we want. A language is called to be a context-free language if there exists a context-free grammar that generates it. Context-free grammars have important practical applications. There exist algorithms to check whether a word can be generated by a given grammar and, if it is the case, generate the corresponding syntactic tree. This tree is of great importance in practice, since it structures a word that initially consisted just in a sequence of symbols. For example, a program written for a concrete programming language is nothing but a sequence of symbols, but the compiler structures it by means of a tree using a grammar that defines the programs that are valid for this language.
Let's see now an alternative grammar for the language of previous example. In this case, we have only one non-terminal. From S, we can choose at each step either to add only an A or to add an A and a B at the same time. This grammar looks simpler. However, it is not better than the previous one because it has a property that we prefer to avoid. A word generated by this grammar may have more than one syntactic tree. For example, here we have two derivation trees for the same word AAB. In the one on the left, we first add an A and then a pair AB. While in the one on the right, we first add a pair AB and then an A. When a grammar admits more than one derivation tree for a word, we say that it is ambiguous. Let's see another example of ambiguous grammar. This example will illustrate why the ambiguity is not a desirable property in general. The language generated by this grammar is clearly of practical interest since it corresponds to sequences that represent an expression built of additions and subtractions of natural numbers. An expression can be an addition of sub-expressions, a subtraction of sub-expression, or a natural number. A natural number is a sequence of one or more digits. A digit is one of these symbols. We can, for example, generate this word. Note that, although these expressions have a meaning for us, from the point of view of the grammar, what is being generated are just words. This derivation tree can be used later to give a meaning to the word that has been generated. These are two different trees for this word. Here they are. In the first case, we have an addition as main expression and a subtraction as a sub-expression. In the second case, we have a subtraction as a main expression and an addition as sub-expression. In both cases, by inspecting the value of the leaves, from left to right, we get the word 7 minus 4 plus 2. Both trees are useful to guarantee that this word is a correct expression according to our grammar. However, derivation trees can be used later to give a meaning to the generated words. If we understand the tree on the left as an indicator for the order in which an expression has to be evaluated, we obtain that, first of all, we have to calculate this subtraction of sub-expressions and then this addition. In the case on the right, the tree indicates that we first have to add these two sub-expressions and then subtract these two sub-expressions. Here we have the simplified trees, or abstract trees. It is clear that evaluating the tree on the left yields a different result than evaluating the tree on the right. Intuitively, each trick corresponds to an implicit placement of brackets in the obtained expression. If we use, given a grammar and a word, an automatic generator of syntactic trees, If the grammar is ambiguous, we run the risk of obtaining a tree that does not correspond to the meaning that we want to give to the inputs. For this reason, the concept of ambiguity is important and it has to be taken in account when using automatic parsers. Here we have an alternative grammar generating the same language with no ambiguity. Note that we are forced to choose the first rule if the first operation is an addition and the second rule if the first operation is a subtraction. In this way, the word that they want to generate totally determines the rule to be used at each node.